And right now from Capitol Hill, Republican Congressman Dar uh, Daryl Issa of California. Uh, Daryl, I know you've been uh, listening to a lot of this. Let me ask you, um, can somebody like you uh, convince uh, the 2015 version of me uh, that you can be in the establishment but can, but can also speak to what conservatives, uh, small government conservatives really want, and that is a battle on some of these massive spending bills that always seem to pass. Well, Joe, I want to take a personal liberty for a moment and say uh, I didn't serve with Newt, but I did serve with John Shattuck, and I had the same view. If he told me this is a tough, but this is why we're going to do it, we would do it. Uh, the fact is that, yes, I think that uh, I can be potentially uh, a candidate, but at the same time, I agree with the, the vast majority of, uh, of members, I think, that we need a Paul Ryan or we need somebody who is A, experienced, B, has been a committee chairman or something other than than just up through the leadership ranks. We very definitely need to pick our fights carefully, but we need somebody who's willing to do those fights when the time comes, because the motion of our party has been to the right. The new members, the members since 2010, they're more conservative, they're more interested in, in real fiscal reform, and uh, they've been denied by the K Street, if you will, influence, the ability to actually get votes that were fiscally responsible. We've had some tough votes. The Cure Act, uh, popular, sure. We gave away $14 billion with a fake pay for. We have been dealing with real problems of leadership telling us to do something because it was popular rather than doing what the American people asked us to do when they swept us back into the majority after we had lost it for good cause. We have Elise Feedback with the Washington Post here. She's got a question for you. Elise. Hey, Congressman, thanks for coming on the show. So if you jump into the speaker's race, you will be running against Jason Chaffetz, who took your position as chairman of the House Oversight Committee. I'm curious how you think he's doing in that role and uh, if you have any criticisms of how he's handling some of the investigations you started. Well, look, Jason's a good man, uh, an honorable man, but uh, he got his job by uh, going to Boehner and saying he would shut down that that rancor that was going on. He would go along, get along, and he's done that. He put shining uh, pictures of Utah on the wall, and he, he uh, basically stopped doing it. There hasn't been a single committee report uh, or staff report published since he's been chairman. The, uh, the fact is, he's a good guy, but whatever he was as a freshman, when he was a fighter on our committee, when he was trying to hold government accountable, he took a break from that. And I think that's going to hurt him, not whether I get in the race or not. It already hurt him. He didn't have 30 votes uh, going into the race. Uh, I don't think he's going to get the 240. But let's understand something. I would not have the hubris to determine whether I'm the 240 candidate or Paul Ryan. This is something where the conference has to dig deep. They have to ask the question of who can we unite behind. This is a job you can't run for. You can make yourself available for it, but the conference really has to look hard, not for who's got the most uh, whips calling, but who really can make a difference beyond 218. Because the day after your speaker, you have to make hard decisions, and like Joe said earlier, you have to be able to go to people and say, I promise you I will bring up your issue, but I need you to do this for me now. And you've got to keep those promises. And that was one of the areas that Boehner ran out of uh, the ability to get people to say yes to. Let, let's bring in right now Gene Robinson. He's got a question as well. Gene. Uh, Congressman uh, Issa, doesn't the conference right now need a leader who will tell the truth uh, to the Freedom Caucus and others uh, and say, look, uh, we don't, our party doesn't have 60 votes in the Senate, our party doesn't have the White House, and therefore we cannot impose our will uh, uh, just from the House of Representatives. Doesn't that truth need to be told and brought home? You know, that truth has been told, uh, but let's, let's break the truth down into a smaller bite. The Freedom Caucus isn't saying shut down the government. They're not saying my way or the highway. Those members, many of whom were my best members, my most aggressive members on the Oversight Committee, what they're saying is with $4.2 trillion of spending, can't we aggressively get a few bites at the <laughs> apple every time there's a tough vote? Can't you put something in there that is, it doesn't have to be the biggest program in the world, but can't you at least cut something? And uh, they've got their list. 
they've made their budgets. Uh, Jim Jordan and many of the other members, uh, these are thoughtful legislators. Uh, they need to get something, and it can't be, well, vote for this one that actually increases spending. Vote for this one that has everything the president wants. And when we get a president, we'll do something different. Uh, I served with a Republican House, a Republican Senate, a Republican president. The one thing I know is if you delay waiting for the perfect storm, you will delay past your lifetime. Yeah. Only the Democrats have gotten a supermajority in the Senate, a majority in the House, and the president, at least right. in my lifetime. All right, Congressman Darrell Issa, thank you so much for being with us. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. You know, there, there's something else missing, too.